for this special tour of Sharp's Peninsula. Midas Historic Tours join forces with the International Sharp Appreciation Society, or the SAS, whose members were to make the journey to Spain and Portugal from all over the world. At Talavera on the 28th of July 1809, the British Army won its first major action over Napoleon's Grand Army in Spain. Wellesley's victory rang out across Europe as the first great defeat for the French, as well as earning him immortality as Viscount Wellington. Sharp too made his name at Talavera, capturing a French eagle standard in the climactic stages of the battle, the setting for Sharp's eagle. That's where you're standing now, Monumento. This is the Medellin, it's Wellington's command post. So the French came in. Also with Bernard on the tour is Richard Rutherford Moore, better known as Rifleman Moore, the military and technical advisor to Carlton's Sharp television series. His expertise as a battlefield guide and ability to explain even the most complicated of actions from the point of view of the ordinary soldier adds a fascinating extra dimension to the tour. OK, we're standing above the valley of the Portina, which is down there. And it was across here that the major French attack of the day came. Uh, and it was the crisis of the battle. Um, what happened was that about 12 French columns came down that slope, crossed the stream. They were thrown back, and the British, who thought they'd defeated them, pursued them. In fact, it was two brigades of, of the King's German Legion and a brigade of the Guards who pursued them. And the French weren't beaten, because behind them there was a second attack. And, and that began to deal very, very roughly indeed with the British. And then looked as if it was going to come all the way through, pierce the British line and win the battle. Uh, Wellington had seen the danger. He'd shoved some troops down there. Um, it was almost his last reserves. They threw the French back, and it was during that second, finally, if you like, that counterattack that Sharp takes his eagle right down there in the valley. Uh, so that's where Sharp's peninsula career takes off, and the frogs lose yet another eagle. This now becomes the badge of the South Essex, the eagle in chains. But despite the triumph for Sharp and the South Essex, in the real story of the Peninsula War, it was to be another two years before the British Army finally captured a French eagle. Richard can tell you where the first eagle was captured. It was down south by an Irish regiment. Um, thank you, Barossa. But there, there is a rumour that, in fact, another one was captured and that the soldiers believed it was made of gold. Oh. And so they tore it apart to share it all out because it wasn't made of gold. Um, so who knows, maybe there was another one missing. The French never actually admitted to losing them, ever. <laughs> they carried spares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they did. They did carry spares. We captured some of the spares. But other than that, if you do want to go down to the Portino, all the soldiers' letters and diaries record that the valley was thick with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I mean, in essence, you could write the Sharp books without visiting the battlefields. And because battlefields are rather complicated places, uh, they're not simple hills and simple plains and straight rivers, you have to simplify it for the reader. Um, I mean, reading a Sharp book should not be a difficult experience. And when you get to the battle, you want to know what's happening and you want to know that Sharp is on hill A and the enemy is on hill B and between them is a valley. Now, if in reality, as, for instance, at Talavera, the hills are not very straightforward. You're going to get terribly confused if you start saying to the reader that Sharp was on the first crest but not the second crest, and meanwhile on the third crest down but not the one on the other side. I mean, it just gets confusing. I have to explain that this book is a first edition hardback of Sharp's Eagle, yeah. and the lady whose book it is, Jean, um, came with us to Waterloo and dearly wanted to come with us today. And last year, one of these went for $1,200 in the States. <laughs>